Alright guys, today we're going to talk about one of the most compelling EDC knives on the market today. And unfortunately, it is not made in the US. And we are dipping pretty low into the price points. Um, this is definitely budget territory. Of course, we are talking about one of the most popular knives, I think, that was released in the last few months, and that is the Civivi Cubit or Quibit. I think I'm going to be calling it or trying to call it Quibit for this one. Um, but uh, for the fact of the matter, this is goes by a few names, but it is definitely one of the more popular knives that has been dropped here of late. And I wanted to share why I think that is. Um, of course, mine is also in the very cool or my preferred colorway of red and black. I think it features or looks very nice. And ironically, I've been getting a lot of budget knives that are uh, red and black or at least red for the handle. So I think overall it looks very aesthetically pleasing. It's a pretty cool knife, pretty clean design. And of course, that button lock action is also pretty cool. Now, I do have to say I am very happy, even though this is unfortunately a Chinese knife, which is not necessarily necessarily my preference. Um, I definitely am pretty excited to see a, you know, increase in button lock knives because I think button lock knives are, I don't know, I wouldn't say like the future, but I think they are very cool, very promising. I wish more knife companies would go to things like button locks as opposed to liner locks and frame locks. It's nice to see something that's just a little bit different. All right, so why is this thing so freaking popular? Uh, I think the biggest reason, singularly speaking, has to be the price point. Of course, these little quibits, um, basically in just about any colorway outside of the Damascus and green, um, come in at a very attainable price, right around the low $50 mark. I think this one's like $53 on Amazon. Could be wrong, but it's right around that price point. And so I think that that is a very good price point for a lot of people. It's very reachable very attainable and that's part of the reason why I like to throw every so often um, Chinese knives on here because unfortunately regardless to how you slice it at least nowadays like with many things in reality um, you know prices are getting more expensive so if you want to get a $50 knife the chances uh, of it being a you know Chinese product is going to be very high and like I said this is just kind of a matter of fact of everything you know housing transportation all these types of costs are going up up tremendously so knife manufacturing as a whole is going up tremendously as well so it is hard to find you know American made blades um, for under a hundred dollars just as a rule I mean even things like the Hodeca which is what I would consider a budget American knife is still averaging about a hundred thirty dollars and so you know when you look at it when it comes down to you know like more affordable more attainable knives um, unfortunately they probably will be Chinese anyways so so the attainability of this is very high and that is probably the biggest reason why this is such a big seller now i think another reason why this is such a big seller is its design it's very attractive it's very good looking very sleek i, I think that this honestly is kind of like the spiritual successor to the banter knife um, that civivi slash we have already very much popularized and so this shares a lot of commonalities i guess in like size blade thickness blade material at least stock blade material and so on and so it really um, is not a huge surprise that it is very popular now some things that um, I do like about it its aluminum handle is pretty cool I like the fact that it is a metal handle I think that gives it some good weight and uh, you know it's I think aluminum is one of those things it's a good compromise honestly because it gives it weight and really good rigidity like there is no bend in aluminum handles especially solid aluminum like this but um, as far as it goes, when it comes down to this guy, um, the one disadvantage, and this goes for most aluminum handles that aren't like frag patterned, is that it can be slick. And this is one knife that uh, definitely, like, I would say if you're holding it, like, you know, you're holding it and you have a good grip on it, it's not going to like slip out of your hands. But if you go into like to break your grip or a compromised grip, like to close it, you do need to be you know, mindful that this thing is slick. Like there is no legitimate texturing on this handle. It's just basically raw coated aluminum. So do keep that in mind when you're handling it. Um, it. If you have like sweaty hands, this could easily slip out of your hands and fall. So do keep that in mind. Um, it, that is probably the biggest disadvantage about this handle in my opinion. Now, obviously the reason why they went with pretty much just raw aluminum is price 
because obviously the moment you start milling and cutting into that aluminum, it starts to get more expensive, especially considering that aluminum is a metal. So it's gonna go through, like say you're using a CNC machine, it's gonna go through router bits faster because it is a metal as opposed to something like G10. So this, at this price point, you probably will not see any textured or frag pattern in the aluminum at like at this price point unfortunately so you are kind of left with this very slick handle so do keep that in mind um, when you know considering this blade that is probably my least favorite part about it one thing i will say that is good about the ergonomics um i do like the fact that it does have a small um forward finger choil once again i've said this in many videos i am a definitely preferential to forward finger choils because i really like being able to get right on that cutting edge as you can with the quibit and also i think the other thing that i like about uh, forward finger choils especially on smaller overall knives like the quibit is that it can help kind of extend the feeling of the handle. So, you know, obviously this isn't necessarily a part of the handle, but if you have larger hands, being able to put your finger up towards the cutting edge, you know, gives you more space towards the back. Now for me, uh, you know, I have like medium sized hands, so it's not necessarily uncomfortable to just hold the knife in its normal position, but uh, you know, it's nice to have that option. So as far as the action goes, as you guys can probably see here, the action's great. You can open it, no problem. I feel like this thing runs on bearings. It kind of looks like it is running on bearings. I do not think it runs on washers, which for this price point isn't necessarily a problem. Um, it is, as you guys can see, incredibly smooth to open and close. One thing I will say um, about the action that I noticed, and I have trouble really replicating it, consistently but there have been some other reviewers that have noticed and there we go finally got it to do it um, and that is something with the quibit i'm not quite sure why it does this but it will if you really like reef on this action like so you really flick this thing out and you do it at the right angle essentially what happens is this blade hits and then slightly bounces back like this and it doesn't really give enough time for this locking mechanism to like push into place and lock the blade up. So once it's in its locked like, um, like once it's locked open, it is completely fine. There's no blade play in any direction. And I have even done some, you know, spine wax to see if it will disengage. I don't have any fears that it will disengage on you, but do keep in mind if you really like reef on this thing, like you really like flick it open, like you try to open it hard, you can at the right angles, get this thing to basically hit the stop pin and then slightly bounce back kind of like this. And so your blade will be unlocked. So just keep that in mind. One thing I will note, if you do hold this like in a reasonably standard grip, even if it does happen, because of that generous forward finger choil, probably won't cut yourself, but you probably will scare the crap out of yourself. So keep that in mind. Um, just make sure that, you know, if you are really like reefing on this thing, you're really trying to open it hard, make sure that it locks up. And once again, this isn't usually a problem because most of the time, what, like I said, what ends up happening, is this thing bounces back out slightly and then comes back tries to come back into its normal groove. So like if you are just like say holding it like this and then you really flick it open, you can kind of feel it where it hits, bounces back and then comes back with that inertia. So if it's like in a normal position where gravity is wanting that blade to go to the locked position, it will. But if it's not like say you're holding it like this, and so you guys can see there, um, it did not lock up. So do keep that in mind. Um, either if you're gonna open it hard, either open it hard in a direction where that blade will naturally gravitate towards the locked position, or just don't reef on it. Um, it's not a huge deal for me. And once again, even in a, um, like not favorable position. Like you guys can see there, it bounced, but it's still locked back up. So I don't know, it's very inconsistent about that. So I can't necessarily like fault it and say like that this will absolutely do it every single time you do this because you can see that it definitely doesn't. So I don't know, it's not a huge deal to me. I know some people that are like looking for excuses will be like, oh, that's an immediate, you know, like the, the knife just can't be trusted. Like for me, I don't really care about that opening that much so long as you're aware of that limitation. And most most importantly for me, it's one of those things that like once the knife is in the locked position, that it stays locked. That it's not like going anywhere. There's no blade play and stuff like that. So for me, that's a little bit more important. I don't necessarily mind because like I said, 
you really have to like reef on this thing. Like you have to like flick it out to get it to not want to lock. So it's something that you pretty much have to go out of your way to do. So anyways, uh, just a small thing. I only tried it out because like I said, I had watched some other reviewers that had commented on that lock issue. And uh, this one does present that. I would say that probably most Quibbits have that. So just bear that in mind, but it's also at the same time, uh, something that like so you really have to purposefully like really reef on this thing like i can't even consistently get it to do it primarily because this um this uh, angle to like open it is very unnatural for me so anyways uh yeah overall like i said it's a pretty compelling knife um for this price point and like i said i don't necessarily love chinese knives but at the same time too like when people on the channel ask for you know more budget oriented blades realistically speaking getting into american knives like truly well-made american made knives at least on the primary market like buying brand new you're really not gonna be able to buy anything for under a hundred bucks now there are some really good Chinese and Taiwanese offerings as I've covered on the channel you know like the Ontario Red Rat 1 is another really solid offering that's not made in America made in Taiwan the Cold Steel Code 4 and American Lawmen are the same way really good Taiwanese made blades they're not made in America the 80 20.5 uh, by Demco Knives is another really good Taiwanese blade um, I think that one actually does tend to go just a little over 100 but uh, by and large you know there are some really good venerable options out there I just think that this one for the price point is pretty darn good. Like it's pretty hard to beat. Not be the biggest fan of Chinese knives, but when the Chinese do something right, like you got to give credit where credit is due. I'm not necessarily strictly biased to saying that, oh, because it's made in China, it's just trash. You know, like I'm not going to just sit here and lie to you guys. I give credit where credit's due. If someone does a good job at making a knife, then it's a good knife, right? Not not always necessarily my preference, but especially when we're trying to appeal to people who may be new to knives, who may not have, you know, four, five, six, seven hundred dollars to spend on a Damascus Spartan RZ folder. You know, like you, you probably don't have that type of money. And so I don't necessarily want to make this channel all about like unattainable knives that you wish you had, right? So some of these knives genuinely on the channel, like I want to bring to you because they are actually attainable and good deals. So I think this Vivi Quibbit is just that and uh, I'm definitely going to be bringing hopefully some more uh, Civivi blades if I can track them down. Uh, another one I would like to feature is the Spiny Dogfish which is a Gavco collaboration and also Snacks uh, his collaboration with Civivi 2 would be a really nice one to bring on the channel. So anyways we will see how many Civivis I do end up bringing on the channel and once again I don't think I'll really focus on like you know a lot of these larger knife tubers they do like just weekly drops of here's all the new Civivis that came out this week and that's not necessarily my style but when when Civivi and Best Tech and a handful of others do a really good job with a knife it is worth talking about at least if for no other reason to give some of the more budget oriented people an option for a good EDC blade anyways guys as always god bless and I'm out